So Earl, first of all, congratulations. Great to see you again. I might be the only coach coming out to Bad Bunny. <laughs> <laughs> this is my vibe, though. I mean, it's great to be back. Um, all great trailblazers. Uh, being Latino, growing up, Mexican household, you know, you met my mom. Yep. My mom was like, you know, I'm Latino, but I'm Mexicana. Like, every time <laughs> she gets it straight. I mean, so, big time. <laughs> you know, um, growing up in a black neighborhood is where I learned to play basketball. Yeah. Well, I was raised Latino in the house, raised Mexican in the house. Wow. And so, um, I mean, just going back, you share with me that your grandparents were undocumented. They came to this country like many of our ancestors did because they were seeking a, a better life. And they found it here in the United States. And you became the embodiment of what can happen here in this country. Um, you were a great player, um, but you were almost uh, a coach on the floor when you were a player. I remember that about you. Tell me a little bit about your basketball philosophy. So my philosophy came from a lot from, we talk about like our opportunities. I was listening in the back. My opportunities came from my mom praying for me every day, every mm. night. My mom is big on praying. You know, she'll pray three or four times a day even though she had probably prayed for me probably eight times a day for me <laughs> from school. But um, I think that's where my opportunities came from. Uh, I grew up typical, you know, undocumented grandparents where my mom was first gen. Um, my mom didn't graduate from high school. She mm. never had a chance to go. So we grew up, you know, I was cleaning in commercial buildings on Fridays, playing basketball tournaments on Saturdays. My mom was in the parking lot selling enchiladas so I can get enough money for the next trip to make for AU. So I grew up in that era and I never saw anything wrong with it, even though majority of the people I was playing with was, was African-American, right? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. but we never hid who we was. I always saw my mom in the stands yelling, mijo, mijo, tira, tira, tira. you could just hear it. She was a standout every time, you know? So those things always stuck with me. So who I became as a player came from how I seen my mom work hard, how I seen my dad implement structure and just being confident in who you were, even though you was different in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. As far as being, you know, black again, you know, I just, I just seen the whole thing, and I never, I always had pride in who I was, and, you know, Armando says it all the time, like, you know, I'm 100% both. My heart is big for both. I have passion for both. I touch both communities, and, my, and the whole purpose for me is to create a platform and a narrative that's different from what we hear through the media. Yeah, that's uh, that's great, man. Appreciate that so much. Um, let me just ask a question off off the cuff. Why UCLA? I mean, you're from Kansas City. Everybody thought you were going to go to Kansas. <laughs> the beach. <laughs> I, I knew I wasn't going to walk the class in the snow. You know? I just knew that was not going to happen. But Coach Wooden, UCLA basketball Coach tradition. Wooden. Yeah. I spent a lot of time with Coach Wooden, wow. the tradition of UCLA. And also the challenge in the academics and athletics is the best to me of any university in the country. Because mm -hmm. UCLA is an academic school. So I knew I was going to be tested every time I touched the classroom, every time I touched the court, and to be surrounded by so many people who had so much big ambition, it was to me, was everything. So even then, you knew that basketball was important, but it wasn't everything. You were already thinking beyond that to a certain degree, just, to, just by your selection of where you went to school and why. I, wasn't I mean, the, besides the beach part, but other like than I, that. I yeah. wasn't the typical high school All-American. I literally grew up on Fridays cleaning commercial buildings with my mom. Mm. So I wasn't, it wasn't typical for That me. work ethic. You know, you had and, it. And, and whatever it takes to get it done, right? Yeah. So continue to push the family forward, generations forward. That's always been my goal. No matter what it is, take it and move it forward. So um, the beauty of it, though, is I can relate to a lot of different things, a lot of different people. Hmm. And it might come off sometimes it's different or it's, you know, I look at it this way. I'm a disruptor in anything that I do because I come from a disrupting place. Yep. Right? Steve Jobs was a disruptor and he's embraced. Hmm. I'm a disruptor. I just don't look like Steve Jobs. Hmm. I look different. Hmm. Right. I come from a background where, you know, we're not supposed to be disruptors, but I don't care when I enter the room. I'm very proud of who I am and I do not morph into anyone but who I was grew up and raised to be. That's the way to be, man. That's the way to be. And you do you do broadcasting as well right now. You enjoy that? I never thought I, would, I never thought I would coach. I never wanted to coach. To be honest with you, I was playing for Larry Bird in Indiana. He was like, you should coach. I'm like, for what? <laughs> he was like, really? you should just do it because I played with so many really good coaches from, you know, Jim O'Brien to Frank Vogel to Qu Casey to Nate McMillan, Hubie Brown. Hubie Brown. You know, Jerry West in Memphis, Fratello. Like I said, Coach Wood and mentored me throughout UCLA and I had so much knowledge to give. I never thought I would coach and I never thought I would do TV because talking to me was not my thing. It was more actually the plan than talking. Yeah, but you're really good at it. I mean, the, the commentating that you do, the way you break down games, the way you 
give the viewer an inside sort of view of what's happening and why. Um, I mean, I think you've got a huge future there if you want it, you know, in broadcasting, I'm, in my humble opinion. But, uh, but coaching, obviously, um, you know, you, you ended up going down that path and maybe wasn't necessarily part of the master plan. But, you know, I always saw you as a player's coach, right? Um, somebody that just had this incredible way to connect with players. Uh, you develop rapport. You know, you invited me to a couple of practices when you were at the Phoenix Suns. I saw this firsthand. Um, and you mentored a superstar in the NBA by the name of Devin Booker, who speaks so highly of you, openly, basically credits his career to basically the guidance you gave him early in his career. Tell me about that. It's interesting. You guys have something in common, by the way. We, we're both black Mexican. It's, it's, it's interesting. <laughs> Devin um, Booker is half Mexican as well. Yeah. In, in, in NBA locker rooms, like the majority culture is obviously African American, and it, it dominant. You have twelve of the most confident players in the world that play basketball in one little space. So most people come into that space and they just, you know, that it's hard to be different. So all I wanted Booker to do was just embrace the culture and take it to levels that I couldn't do it. We have to take it, you know, one generation at a time. But it was always three things for me that I always feel like really important for me. The first one is imagination. You gotta have imagination. I don't care how old you are, how young you are. You have to have imagination and be creative and see yourself in different spaces. Mm. You have to dream it over and over and over again. And wow. you're not gonna get there quickly. You don't know when you're gonna get there. But as Coach Wooden says, failing to prepare is preparing to fail. Mm. The second thing is skill. You're around skillful people, learn from them. Like everyone who's skillful, learn from someone else before them. I don't know who initiated, but you learn and you keep going and you morph it into your own. Right. The last one to me is the most important thing is feel. Because you can have imagination, have skill. If you have no feel, it would not be effective. Feel? Feel. Oh. F-E-E-L. Hmm. So when I get into a room, and who, no matter who I'm talking to, it doesn't matter how much I know, I have to find a way to connect to that person or that group. Right. Right? That's the feel. I could come into any room or any space with a player and want them to do a certain thing, but maybe it's talking about music first. Maybe it's talking about family first. Mm. Maybe it's talking about our favorite food. Maybe it's talking about where we grew up from or our favorite football team. Right. You have to have feel and know who you're talking to. And the feel will take you further than skill or imagination ever will. And it takes you in rooms and spaces to be effective, to be a champion, and also to have a chance to just deliver your message. You know, it's very interesting, man. <laughs> you know, there's so many parallels to the business world. What you just described, right? I mean, as business leaders, business owners, um, our job is to mentor, to inspire, to teach. Um, and, you know, there's, you know, there's this textbook way, and then you talk about feel, right? Because I think part of that feel is recognizing that everybody's a little bit different, right? And different things trigger, inspire people differently. It's a very tough thing to do because you want to treat everybody the same. But you know, at the end of the day, that won't get it done. Everybody has their own little sort of, you know, nuance to them. Um, and great leaders understand that. So that's a, that's a, it's a tremendous attribute. So what, uh, what's the plans moving forward? You got a lot in front of you, a lot of opportunity. So, You're a young man. <laughs> I always say this. Um, at this point in my life, it's about, honestly, it's whatever God wants for me. Mm. Because I really believe your blessing comes with grace. It don't comes with the grit or grind, right? We all been in bad relationships, and that was grit and grind, right? <laughs> Whether it's business or personal. So I think the best blessings come with grace. And whatever grace is, it gives you opportunity to give a major outreach. So one thing I'm doing now more than ever is I'm pouring a lot into women's youth basketball. Wow. Like I did the boys yeah. in L.A. I'm doing that yeah. for, Grassroots for, for young yeah. girls. Girl I, elite. I think it's important for young girls to have these opportunities from men who have all the knowledge but somehow stay only working with men. We have to share that, and I think that's the most important. So the youth is always going to be number one for me. And then if it's coaching, it's coaching, but I kind of like, kind of like a hippie, man. I kind of just move along. You know, I really want to come out to Cardi B. You know what I mean? like, it's like, this is Sancho's bad buddy. My original name was Armando. My mom changed it. And after I met Armando, I'm glad my name's not Armando. You know what I mean? It's kind of like one of those things where I'm just kind of like a hippie. I'm navigating through, but whatever it is, I know it's going to be great. And it's going to be like some type of narrative or story behind it on how you didn't see it coming, but you worked hard and you prepared for whatever great opportunities presented itself. Yeah. You know, uh, I'll just end with, um, you know, the parallels and the connection to NAREP that you had from the very beginning. Uh, you felt that it was your family. Um, Earl invited me um, when he was honored by the UCLA Latino alumni uh, group 
and he asked me if he could uh, speak to NARUP, speak about NARUP in his speech, and he did, um, and how you know it mattered to him, and it was part of who he was. Um, incredible compliment, frankly, and I, you know, I know that you share that with people who you mentor. Yeah. Uh, when uh, Julian wanted to buy himself a Mercedes when he was an assistant coach for the Phoenix Suns, and you said, no, man, you don't do that. You buy a house first. <laughs> and this is what he teaches the people who he mentors, uh, players, coaches, um, and, and, you know, the entire ecosystem that you're uh, you know, exposed to. So um, couldn't be prouder of you. Thank you. Um, really grateful for our friendship. Congratulations on the award. Well-deserved. So thank, thank you, you, brother. <laughs>